Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I just had to talk about this topic because not only is it everywhere, all across just all social media, media in general, but it is also a unique situation where fiction, book to film adaptation, live action and Disney all come together and meet in one glorious melting pot. And yes, we are talking about the aerial casting that was announced earlier this week that has just sent everyone into a complete uproar, has really brought like the latent, I don't see color racists, <laughs> racists out of the woodwork. I mean, it is just insane. But I just wanted to discuss it because you guys know I love discussing things like this on my channel. Once in a while, I love to talk about, you know, race and um, especially, you know, those of us who are a part of the African diaspora and how we are kind of moving along in different spaces in media. And I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to discuss this casting choice. And the casting choice, of course, is that of Halle Berry. Halle Bailey, her name, I want to say Halle Berry so bad, but it's not. Halle Bailey um, of Chloe and Holly, the singing sisters duo, who actually they're original YouTubers. They are YouTubers and they have managed to transcend YouTube. They're incredibly talented sister singing duo. I believe Chloe is the older one and Halle is the younger sister. But yes, the casting of Halle Bailey as our new Ariel in Disney's upcoming live action remake of The Little Mermaid. Man, people have lost their minds over this. I'm trying to keep this channel more PG, so you guys will see me trying to catch myself from letting the bad words out. But yes, so this casting choice has sent everyone into just a tizzy, whether you know they're for or against. And the reasons that I've seen across all various social media platforms of why people are against her being cast are ludicrous at best and just completely defamatory at worst. I mean, it is just latent and blatant racism at its finest, folks. And it is really unfortunate that we are in 2019 and this is still where we are. So let's begin to unpack this casting choice and the impact that it's going to make in media and film and in the world of Disney. And also let's talk a little bit about the original story. So this is booktube, so I'm gonna bring some bookishness back into it. This is technically a book to movie adaptation of sorts. I mean, it was originally a fairy tale written by Hans Christian Andersen, who was a Danish author. I believe it was a, a originally published in 1837, correct me if I'm wrong. And as all fairy tales, the original was quite dark. The original story basically talked about Ariel, a mermaid who was willing to give up anything to gain a a soul um, and she just managed to kind of she was willing to do anything to gain a human soul and she basically lasered her focus in on Prince Eric you know I'm not 100% sure of the original fairy tale it's been a long time since I've read it but I believe the gist of it is that she wanted to marry him and so she gave up her voice and gained human feet and I believe her feet even bled the entire time she was on land it was very gruesome very bloody and he still didn't pick her you guys there was no happy ending for this he still didn't pick her he married someone else and so you have this scene I will never forget this scene when I finally read the original story where she is literally looming over the prince and his new bride as they are sleeping and she's literally contemplating killing them i think she's holding a knife but she can't bring herself to do it and so she eventually dies and becomes sea foam and returns back to the sea i'm telling you it's pretty dark stuff and in disney fashion they took that story and remade it into this wonderful fluffy beautiful fairy tale with a happy ending sorry i'm literally hurting puppies a happy ending and you know something very magical and fantastical and and wonderful with great life lessons woven in I do remember watching The Little Mermaid as a little kid now I will be honest she was not my favorite Disney princess because she looked absolutely nothing like me and I just could not relate to a pale-skinned green-eyed red-haired girl the movie was great I actually do enjoy remember enjoying 
the television show a lot more for y'all that may not know there there was a television show um and it came on you know had regular episodes i do remember watching that a lot more frequently and enjoying that a lot more than the actual film um i do remember really enjoying poor unfortunate souls that was my jam sebastian the crab was it um right sebastian the crab was not his name yes because there was flounder was the flounder in the special okay so yeah so i remember like bits and pieces of it it's been a really long time since i've seen the disney version but you guys the fact that disney decided to cast halle berry berry look at me halle bailey as the new ariel in this in the remake this live action remake that's coming up has been such like a breath of fresh air and it's interesting because i have remained pretty removed emotionally from all of it like when i heard the casting news i was very happy and for obvious reasons this is a black girl an unambiguous black girl she's not biracial she doesn't have white passing features she's clearly a black girl with two black parents black features dreadlocks i don't know if they're going to keep her locks for the film but if they do keep her locks and dye them red i'm going to be getting my entire life in that movie theater but Either way, you know, that is a victory in itself. Casting an unambig unambiguous brown-skinned black girl as Ariel. And the casting choice by Disney, no less. Like, Disney <laughs> being known in the past, and some might even argue recently, as one of the most racist enterprises and monopolies of all time. So this is a big deal. And the responses I've seen have been disappointing, to say the, to say the least. And, you know, I remained mostly emotionally removed from the announcement because I come from the theater world. And in the theater world, we do non-traditional casting all the time. If you're reading a play and the race of the character is not emphasized or holds no great value to the story, if you can change the race of the character or even the, um, the sex of the character and it literally does not disrupt the plot whatsoever it makes no difference the plot can continue pretty much undisturbed and unaffected then a lot of directors do choose to take a more creative route and do non-traditional casting i have been cast in roles where traditionally you know more white count my you know white counterparts would have been casted and the director decided to cast me obviously i'm an unambi unambiguous black woman instead and no one has a bat an eye in the theater world this is something that happens all the time and if you go see a lot of theater and you go to broadway um and even off broadway shows if you are you know familiar with theater at, at all then you'll be aware that this is pretty common i mean i don't remember this uproar when i was a kid and they did the live action version of cinderella and they cast brandy as cinderella and they had a completely non-traditional cast we had a black princess cinderella uh, we had a her white stepmother and her white one of her stepsisters was white the other one was black then we have a black queen played by um, Whoopi Goldberg and her white husband I can't remember his name right now Ralph no not Ralph Fiennes I can't remember his name I feel terrible uh, his her white king and they had an Asian son as the prince I mean and we all loved it we all enjoyed it to this day everyone that I talked to thoroughly enjoyed that live action remake of cinderella and a lot of people still watch it to this day i still watch it to this day i love it so i don't remember there being as much of an uproar when that happened when kiki palmer was cast as the first black cinderella to be cast on broadway i don't remember there being this much of an uproar everyone was happy for her there i really don't recall that so I just find it really interesting that this casting of Halle Bailey has caused such an uproar and people are really upset. I've heard everything from, you know, what about us pale skinned, red headed girls and, you know, we're not going to have representation. And I'm just like, you guys still have the original film and the TV show with countless episodes. You know, what's wrong with little brown skinned girls, black girls coming up and seeing themselves as Ariel and understanding that they can be a mermaid as well. I mean, and then I've also seen people saying, well, what if they, you know, did a live action version of the princess and the frog and they made Tiana white? And I'm like, that doesn't really work because a lot of Tiana's backstory had to do with her race and all the things that she had to overcome as a black woman in that time in New Orleans and in Louisiana, I believe. And no 
th that would completely change the story. The Little Mermaid is a fictional character. She is a mythical creature. She's not even a real person. She is a mermaid. What does it matter? Her skin tone, her complexion, her race, it doesn't. I believe mermaids were actually green. They were fishy. Like the original mermaid creatures written by Hans Christian Andersen looked more like fish than they did like people. So it's very disturbing to see people try to justify their latent racism and it's just really unfortunate. And these are the same people that say that they don't see color but you know ironically they just manage to see color in this instance and they can't get past the fact that Halle Bailey is an unambiguous, un, is an unambiguous black woman. They just can't see past that and I think that is really sad. But yeah, I just wanted to discuss it here on my channel. I think it is really, really interesting, various people's reactions and their justifications for why they're upset. My favorite is, I'm not racist, but... If you have to start a sentence with, I'm not racist, but... You really need to examine what it is about this casting choice that has you so uncomfortable, that has you so upset, that has you so mad. You really need to unpack those feelings and kind of get down to the bottom of it because I love how people say, you know, I'm allowed to be upset about this. This has nothing to do with the race. I just wanted to look like the character. Okay, so if they had cast a white woman and I believe everyone wanted like Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande does not have red hair or green eyes. So she would have had to wear contacts and dye her hair red. And then people were saying that they would even be happy with Zendaya. And is it because she's mixed and she's closer to whiteness and has more Eurocentric features and she would make you guys feel more comfortable? Because again, Zendaya does not have red hair or green eyes. So it's just really something that I feel that those of you, even if you're watching this and you found yourself upset by the casting choice, you really need to unpack those emotions and get down to the bottom of why you are so upset and what is it that is, oh, you guys, and what is it that is making you so upset about this casting choice and why you don't want little black, uh, brown and black girls to see themselves coming up as Ariel, as a mermaid, as a mythical fictional creature. <laughs> All right, I see my battery blinking. It is about to go. But yeah, I just, I do not understand. I really don't. I'm so confused by the outrage behind this. Congratulations to Halle Bailey. This is huge. I'm so happy for her, so proud of her. This is really going to open a lot of doors for other young black and brown women and young girls to really kind of know that those barriers are being broken down. And I'm actually really proud of Disney. Never thought I would say that. Not a huge fan of you know, Disney the conglomerate who's trying to monopolize the entire planet. But I'm actually really proud of them for this choice and for this non-traditional casting choice. And I'm, I'm really with it and I can't wait to see the film. I'm already hype about going to see Lion King in a few. Um, so I'm super, super hype to go see this as well. But yeah, let me know how you feel in the comments. Sorry, this video was all over the place. I just thought I would share my thoughts. And yes, it is racist to be upset about this. It is. I'm sorry. There's no way that it's not racist. You need to think about it, okay? You guys have so many princesses to choose from. We only have Tiana. Native American people only have Pocahontas. Chinese people only have Mulan. Like, <laughs> Japanese people don't even have a princess. Let's not talk about, like, you know, Persian people have Jasmine, but what about the rest of the Middle Eastern people and Indians? Like, you guys... You guys are so privileged and so lucky to have Belle and Aurora and um, Cinderella and gosh, I don't even know. I could go on. Snow White. You guys are so lucky and blessed. And of course, as the dominant culture, it is what it is. You guys are, I'm just going to say it, white supremacy. That's why. <laughs> That's why y'all have so much. So it just, you have to really unpack and think about why you're so mad about this casting choice. And yes. I'm talking to you directly. If this doesn't affect you, if you weren't upset about this, then join me in the comments below. Let's discuss. Say hi to little Toby. He's going to make a cameo in every single video now. He's so cute. All right. I will catch you guys later. I just wanted to film this really quick. All right. Bye, guys. And yes, she is my Ariel. If she's not your Ariel, I'm sorry, but she's mine. Bye. Original, be creative, be yourself. If you're not peppy, don't overly hype yourself up to be peppy and bubbly in your videos. If you're more low-key, more calm, uh, then that's who you need to be in your videos.